July 3rd, 2023. Guys, you're looking at amazing new images of one of the planets in our solar system called Saturn. You can see three of the moons over to the left. The rings are brilliantly lit up. And what happened is uh, we've seen these images before, not quite like this though, from Hubble. Very clear images of our inner and outer solar system. But this is the new James Webb Space Telescopes. It's part of SETI, it's part of the University of Idaho, and they all get together in the computers and the telescopes. Anyway, what they did, they used a light frequency in this image that's not uh, visible to the human eye. They wanted to do that so that they could see with more clarity the outer moons. There's three to the left. And what happened was the rings became very brilliant not just the moons but the rings themselves and what had happened is the atmosphere of saturn they think is methane we have oxygen but they think that's methane there and methane blocks out that particular light frequency so the planet of saturn itself is a little dimmer but for the first time they're seeing the brilliance of the rings and three of the moons and it's incredible to me. Now, we've talked about Saturn and these rings before, and Jupiter. And it goes back to the ancient Sumerians. They're saying Jupiter did not have all the moons that it has at one time, and Saturn did not have these rings. What happened to cause that? Now, maybe nine or ten years ago, I did a video, or maybe a three-video series about this, and the ancient Sumerians called Jupiter Nibiru, the planet of the crossing. Now, scientists have went back and reverse modeled the activity of the inner solar system, the outer solar system, going back hundreds of thousands of years, just reversing the models of the rotation and the effect of gravity between the different planets. And I, again, part of a video series I did but something happened in the inner solar system. It could have possibly been during what we would term a grand solar maximum with a lot of solar activity increasing the gravitational uh, power and pull and tug of the sun. Anyway, the scientists did the reverse modeling and it showed that S Jupiter was pulled in closer to the inner solar system. Saturn was pulled in behind it because of the effect of I guess you'd a chain link of gravity here. Now, between Mars and Jupiter, the fourth and fifth planet, which are technically the fourth and sixth planet, was another planet that's not named. And that's where the planet of the crossing comes in. Jupiter was pulled in, at, and either it or some of its Galilean moons, which there were only four or five back when Galileo could see them with the primitive telescopes now, there's probably closer to 100 that's visible. But anyways, it pulled in. There was either it or its Galilean moons collided with the fifth planet, the one between Mars and Jupiter. The conflict there and the crashing, the chaos, create crushed the fifth planet. That's why you see the asteroid belt. Also, more than likely, that's why you saw Mars take that Looks, makes the Grand Canyon look like a very small scratch on the side of Mars. And there was upheaval all through the inner solar system. Now, the models show that eventually Jupiter and Saturn pulled back out into their present locations. Just bear with me here. But as they did that, these brilliant rings that you see on Saturn was part of the debris field that was captured during that collision. We don't know what all happened, but there were more than likely our asteroid belt, which is millions of pieces of rock, it was a planet. Now as J Jupiter come in, it again collided with that, destroyed it, possibly the, our moon was formed at that uh, point in time, and there was great, again great upheaval. You can see the, uh, rea the uh, signs of it all over our planet with the giant asteroid impacts. The moon looks like a catcher's mitt of asteroids coming in. And um, there's, again, the Mars scar. But as it pulled back out, things started to settle down. You started seeing the Gal uh, Galileo moons start to form their orbit. 
Saturn pulled back out and look what it pulled with it as part of that debris field. So I know a lot of people get upset when I tell them Saturn, or excuse me, Jupiter is Nibiru, but that's what the ancients called it. The ancient Sumerians called Saturn Nibiru. So regardless of how you think about that, just follow along here. Again, there's three moons to the right. So it's this, these are brilliant images. Someone was really thinking this down. They may not have accounted for the dimming effect of the methane on Saturn itself so that we see these, the light of the uh, outer rings, but it worked out very good. Uh, let's read a little bit about it. NASA recently pointed the James Webb Space Telescope called JWST towards Saturn for the first time, and the images it captured have fascinated researchers. The goal of the observations was to test the telescope's ability to detect small faint moons around the planet, but Saturn's ring stole the spotlight. It says the Webb Telescope collects infrared light, which is different from the visible light humans see. The planet appeared dark in the infrared images due to the methane in Saturn's atmosphere, while the icy rings appeared incredibly bright. This is the first time that the planet's atmosphere has been seen with this clarity and this particular wavelength. And as we look at this and pull it up, this was on the 25th, so just over a week ago. You, they're, they're naming some of the things. You've got the gaps and the different rings, C ring, B ring, and A ring to the right. But to the left, you've got uh, Dione, uh, Enceladus, and Tethys, three of these brilliant moons. They're very large. Again, it's, to me, I see the magnificence of the creation of our Father in Heaven. And now we're starting to have that ability. Now, there's going to be a lot of celestial events. I think we've got uh, four uh, brilliant full moons coming up, things like that, that we're going to start seeing in the sky. But to me, this is so amazing to see it in this wavelength after knowing, and again, for about 10 years or so, about this inner collision that created what we have now. And uh, guys, if you, I don't know how many of you are students of uh, that great chapel up in Gravit, Arkansas called the Shepherd's Chapel. Brother Murray, I think it was the 2014 guys uh, on Valentine's Day that we lost one of the greatest teachers of all time. But he would talk about the first, second, third earth ages. And that's important because it can fill in a lot of gaps. If you understand that, you, people talk about the dinosaurs are millions of years old, and then folks will come in and say, well, the Bible says we're only 6,000 years old. All of that can be, if you understand the different Earth Ages, that there were two floods, first Earth Age, second Earth Age, which we are in now, and then, and I understand this right, uh, when we go into the thousand year millennium, we'll be into the third Earth age. Now it said they could see the moon, the rings, but it says stargazers can head outside to see Saturn for themselves throughout this month of July. However, it may require losing some sleep as the planet rises in the eastern sky after midnight. That's where the sun rises. Local time and gradually climbs high in the southern sky throughout the second half of the night. So you can uh, get some images of it right now you won't have those images unless you have that particular infrared filter guys but i wanted to share that with you and a couple of other things that uh, we've kind of been talking about the last few nights and the last few videos now what this is guys is a image from colorado this is over the city of boulder i've been there i've driven that mountain road guys if you come into denver and go up into golden and up into the mountains and you head north and it loops back east and you come down that highway through the mountains into Boulder. I've been there and it's beautiful in that area. Now that was several years ago before it was a lot of subdivisions and things like that. A totally different government. But in a video a couple days ago, or was it yesterday, I mentioned the fact that the effect on animals and the uh, fireworks caught a lot of heat. It, it, I thought people thought I'd slap their cat or something guys it was <laughs> anyway I, I understand that people and a lot of people said well you sound like a Democrat talking about taking away our rights and privileges that had guys that had nothing to do with it 
and other people came in there and said well if you were a responsible pet owner which I have 10 dogs that I take very good care of very responsible that uh, if you had if you were responsible you could have your dogs in and uh, everything under control we have 10 acres and uh, some of our neighbors have a hundred acres. So there's cattle, there's other animals, there's ducks on the ponds, birds in the trees, all of the above. And when that happens, guys, you don't, it's not just getting your dogs in. It uh, is the fact that you could be blowing up nests of birds. You could be scaring ducks off their nest. People lost their pets. If you've got one, just think about what I'm saying. If fireworks happen and if you look in the comments about the video I did about it maybe yesterday morning or whenever it was that uh, the fact that people didn't find their pets and then that's heartbreaking if you're a pet owner but what you're looking at in this picture and this is Boulder's solution these are LED drones you don't have the loud concussion you don't have the wildfires started by fireworks think about this this is the city's doing this it's not costing you a dime you can put that money into survival food for your family you can blow your check on and send it to China probably to a slave labor camp to get the fireworks made but people attack me pretty heavy and some I know they were firework stand owners or involved in the business or whatever but I wasn't trying to talk about not having the freedom to do it. I was talking about having the heart and the care of animals not to do it. 95% of you guys understood exactly what I'm talking about. But this is a perfect solution. Again, you don't have the smoke. You don't have the concussion sounds that frighten the animals. Somebody said one of theirs ran through an electric fence. Another one said their dog was so panicked he tried to jump the fence and hung himself. But again, it's, um, I said, keep, I said, think about it, use your head when I should have said, use your heart. But anyway, what a perfect solution here. You still have the beautiful images of fireworks, plus maybe a little more coordinated. It kind of looks like a close encounter to the third kind. But guys, don't, don't think that I want to take away anybody's liberty or freedom from speech or freedom to do whatever they want to. But fireworks, it's not a U.S. tradition. I mean, we've all celebrated it. I've done my share of it. But it, as I've gone further in life and realizing the effect on our, our domestic and wild life, that it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. But, you know, you can, for, I don't know what they cost now, two or $300 for, for the uh, artillery shells and the large ones like that. Do you know how you could fill up about 30 or 40 five-gallon buckets of beans and rice air-sealed that could get your family through a year if you had to? Very simple to do it. And so don't attack the messenger. And in this case, don't attack the message. Do what you want to do. Again, use your heart not in, instead of what I said use your head they're saying fire threats and environmental concerns have prompted some US cities to forego traditional 4th of July fireworks in favor of spectacular drone light shows this year and guys I have seen these not live but I've seen videos of them and they are amazing no smoke no concussions no wildfires Salt Lake City Utah tried out the alternative way of celebrating Independence Day on Saturday with its first ever drone show. The city's mayor, Aaron Mendenhall, said in a news release, the new format marked an effort to minimize the area's high fire danger and to lessen air quality problems. Guys, what are we going through right now? Poor air quality and wildfires. As temperatures rise and fire danger increases, we must be conscientious of both our air quality and the wildfire potential. Utah has an average of 800 to 1,000 wildfires each year and the state is among the most wildfire prone in the U.S. according to the Utah, Utah Department of Public Safety. 
not only do you have what you can not only is it just the forest which is the most important thing we have but uh, people's crops and things like that are affected it says uh, in neighboring Colorado also in its wildfire season the city of Boulder made a similar decision this year with its first ever nighttime drone show next week now guys you're looking at an image of a lot of drones and they're in their uh, protective travel cases and everything but normally they will be operated by possibly just one laptop or maybe a couple of laptops but with a controller kind of like a mixing board and it's all pre-programmed and everything in there is pretty cool it's very safe but have you ever seen I think it's called Skinwalker Ranch and I'll catch it every once in a while I don't watch a lot of TV but if it's late and I just want to put something on and uh, go to sleep I will watch some of that uh, anyway on Skinwalker Ranch they were getting these signals from up above them that they really could not cipher out what was happening so it may have been this company which is drone studios out of Southern California they came out to Skinwalker Ranch and they launched above this area where they were getting all these anomalies kind of a flat array of these drones and then they started seeing drones dropping out of the pattern, getting lower and creating the holes in this pattern of, uh, again, like a big roof over them. And so that's when I saw what they were doing. And we, we still don't know exactly what's causing Skinwalker Ranch, but it looks very similar to what they have here. Everything pre-programmed, color changes, patterns, very cool, very nice. Pets don't hate it. You don't catch the woods on fire and you, the city is paying this which I know it's your taxpayer money but it's not coming directly out of your pocket put that money into something uh... but guys thank you for listening on your holiday and I want to end with this it says first super moon of 2023 will glow in the July sky kicking off a month full of dazzling celestial events summer's first full moon will be the biggest and brightest so far this year and it will be one of many intriguing astronomical sights set to unfold throughout July. Now they're saying unless wildfire smoke obscures your view you have some great chances this month to see meteor showers, a stunning view of the Milky Way and very conveniently timed supermoon. And guys um, the best I've ever seen the Milky Way with my naked eye was uh, Tina and I were maybe, it was several years ago, well, nine, eight or nine years, we had climbed Bell Rock. And uh, as it got dark, there there's not much light pollution between what's called uh, um, Oak Creek and uh, Sedona itself, where Bell Rock is located in between the two. And there were millions of stars. I've never seen anything like it. You're in higher elevation, cooler temperatures, and uh, pretty much basically no light pollution. It says July is a bookend month for stargazing with astronomical events crowding the calendar during the start and end of the month. There will be signs. The month kicked off with a pairing of bright planets, an event that was an astronomical appetizer for sky watchers awaiting the first supermoon of the year and the breathtaking views of the Milky Way. Now all of this starts today, July the 3rd, with, with what's called the Super Thunder Moon, which is kind of ironic in the sense that if you look at the videos, people are talking about, in the comments, the loudest thunder and lightning they've ever heard, and I think I mentioned it three or four weeks ago. July's full moon, again, also known as the Thunder Moon, is a nickname related to the frequent storms that rumble across North America throughout the month. Other nicknames include the Buck Moon, Berry Moon, Salmon moon and the halfway summer moon. After July, the next super moon will rise on the evening of Tuesday, uh, August 1st, less than a month away. Now it says summer has the shortest nights of the year across the northern hemisphere, the longest days, shortest nights, but it is the best time to see the Milky Way as the side of the Earth that is facing away from the sun will be pointed toward the core of the galaxy. The best views of the Milky Way will be on the night surrounding the new moons as the lack of moonlight will make it easier to see the faint galactic glow. The next new moon will take place on July 17th, making the middle of the month the ideal time to look for the galaxy in the night sky. 
they're adding in here, and again, a lot of this is coming from AccuWeather, and they bring it from different sources. It says on July 30th and 31st, twin meteor showers to peak. July will conclude with two meteor showers that will provide a preview of an even more impressive light show that will unfold, unfold in mid-August. The southern delta aquiates and the alpha capricornids will peak on the final nights of the month, combining for 15 to 20 meteors per hour. The climax of the two showers will occur on the night of July the 30th into the morning of July 31st. But according to the American Meteor Society, both have plateau-like peaks with good activity focused on the week surrounding the peak night. So you got about seven days or so of there of the activity building up and uh, then slightly uh, peeling back down. Guys, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about tonight. Again, it is now 8.48 p.m. and uh, we're down to the real feel, actually 90 degrees with the actual temperature at 79. I feel like it's fall compared to what we've been to. But guys, we're watching this, you watch it. It's a heads up again. When you look at this type of information, it always makes me think about uh, the creation of our Father in Heaven and uh, how blessed we are to be where we are at. We know there's trials and tribulations coming, but He put many of us here for this particular battle. Keep your heads up, prep, pray, stay out of the way, be safe.